Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Alan pilot and today we are going to have a look at the Phoenix version 2 block 2 update featuring IAE engines and a lot more like the visual updates, the new look of the cabin and so on. So this absolutely promises to become a very very interesting live stream and I'm very much looking forward to this. So before we start there were a couple of settings that Phoenix wanted us to do like changing our sensitivity settings and um, stuff like that so we are definitely going to um, do that. Indeed I did do it already but just to show you what I've done there if we go into the control options then first of all we are going to fly today's video featuring the um, Thrustmaster A320 stick and in the sensitivity settings we've set plus 20 for our X and our Y axis as per Phoenix's requirement. Now I'm not 100% sure why Phoenix ac actually wants us to do such a setting because the Airbus is a full flyby wire aircraft. They could easily intercept the signals and just do those adjustments themselves so that the user could keep the default settings. But so be it and so we'll have to have a look into how this is going to work out. Alright, so with all of that said, um, first of all, hello to everyone down there in the chat and that's a question from uh, Gregor's. What graphics are you using, Google or Bing? I'm using the Bing graphics because I do find them to be the um, much more, let's call it, balanced option in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alright, so let's have a look into the new graphics though. Got new models all over. And we are going to start having a look at these over here. You can already see the engines. Obviously, we've got the IAE V2500 engine that we have in our airplane over here. And the livery is straight from the Phoenix livery manager as well. All right, so in terms of uh, new graphics, if we just take it close up for a walk around, then we can already see that it is still an excellent looking model. Now, it's been a little while since I did such a detailed walk around on the standard, or let's call it on the older Phoenix model, but if we just have a look at this, got the parking brake light over there, that is fully working. It just looks like the model is just made very, very well here. Alright, so if we go on to the most important part that all of you have been waiting for, that is of course the engine. And this is what the model looks like. Very high level of detail. I do love the dirt that we got on the spinner up here. Looking very, very, very good. Okay, so the engine itself, fan blades do seem a little bit clean here for my opinion. Could be a little bit more dirt on them, especially the leading edges. Likewise on the uh, cowling as well. And obviously we have the um, probe up in the uh, top over there, which is going to get important for our IAE readings. Now, a little strange, looking at the um, decals that we've got on the side of the engine over here, those seem to be pretty low resolution. Now, the way Phoenix designed those um, new repaints for the new version is that they basically invited some repainters, and it looks like, at least on this particular livery, at least parts of the engine came out with a little bit lower res. Maybe that's something for an update. In any case, having a look into the back of the engine here, again, good level of detail, even though on here that does look like, well, there could be a bit more details on there, on the uh, nozzle. But anyway, let's continue along the wing for our um, look over here. Once again, this is the level of detail that we wanted to see on the airplane, and this is looking very, very good. I mean, let's be honest over here. This might just as well be a photo and not a simulated airplane. Awesome look that we have over here. And T-Flow, I am using the 8K liveries there. Now, Tinoi 2.0, do I see a frame rate difference? No, none yet. But let's get it flying at first and then we'll have a look later on. Alright, so... Wingtip fences, hopefully for the last time until the next update. And with the next one, we're hopefully going to get to the um, higher detail. Now, something that's really worth having a look at over here is the landing gear struts. Just have a look at the immense level of detail Phoenix put into this one. Especially the dirt textures we got down here. That's absolutely lovely, isn't it? 
Also, if you have a look into the landing gear bay, looks to me like there's been some improvement in the textures here as well. This is, again, very high level of detail, and also some new 3D models that Phoenix put into this. So, overall, really awesome looking landing gear, and really, really well done textures. Alright then, moving on towards the back of the airplane, we do have an open outflow valve over here, which is absolutely what we do expect. Then, tailplane, well, not that much to see if we're honest on the walk around. The airplane doesn't have any scrapes on the tail, excellent. And, well, the other side hopefully looks um, the very same. So with that, let's go ahead and go straight forward again over to the cabin. And the cabin is going to be the next important thing here. But first things first, something I do notice when I'm sitting in the plane here, it looks like the default viewpoint has been transferred up a little bit. So if you have a look at this, you can see that we can now see the top of the glass shield a little bit better. And as far as I'm aware, that was not the case previously. So now we can see a little bit more over there. And indeed, it does seem to be in line with the Airbus recommended seating position very nicely over here. Okay, so all of that good stuff done, I do suggest that we are going to fire up the airplane. So a couple of safety checks here. And by the way, I do notice a very well looking printer model up there. That seems to be new. So, master leave is off, engine mode selector norm, weather radar is off. By the way, looking at the weather radar, that's some lovely new textures down here, isn't it? This has certainly gotten a little bit more attention and a little rework. Looks excellent. Looks really excellent down here. Okay, a landing gear lever is down and we have the wipers both off. It does take a little bit to get used to the um, little bit higher seating position that we've got right now. Like, look at that, we are a little bit higher. You can see that, that there's a slight change in perspective compared to the earlier version. Okay, so, um, Roy van Kahn, you're asking the really important questions. Is the test.x still there? Let's find out. Well, yeah. The test.x is still here. Excellent. So they did certainly focus on the important parts here. Alright, cool. So let's take a seat again and we're going to start powering it up. The battery voltage is above 25 and a half. Okay, and external power on. Listening out to those sounds. Let me turn them up a bit. Alright, here we go. So, the airplane is going to take a little while to power everything up. While that happens, let's have a look into the EFB where we've also seen quite a couple of changes. First of all, the failure page here is completely new and we are going to have a look into that a little bit later on. But let's first start with our Phoenix app over here. We are going to import our flight plan from uh, Simbrief. Yeah, thank you very much, and we're going to adjust that time in a few moments. But then let's go over to the sim settings, because over here there's quite a couple new things. So first of all, we can now remove the DCDUs, and that is something that I just want to show you for a moment. DCDU gone, and this is what it looks like. Now, in Europe, pretty much all airlines have the DCDUs installed, but not so much in the United States. For example, when you're flying an American Airlines plane, which I'm sure quite a couple of you will do now that we've got the V2500 engines, then you might certainly want to remove the DCDU. Okay, also, we've got an option for a SATCOM antenna here, so let's have a look at that, and here it is located on the uh, back of the plane. Now, when it says European, there must be an American option as well, and here it is, a little bit further forward. Okay, so going back and let's remove the SATCOM once again. Apart from that, do we have any new options over here? Yes, EFB mount, window or frame. Okay, so you can choose between whether the EFB is either sucked to the window or you can attach it on the airframe itself. Let's a closer look. So this is what it looks like when you mount the EFB on the actual airframe. And certainly in my airline, that is the preferred option, because when you put those suction cups on the window all the time, then it becomes very, very easy to 
delaminate the window and obviously that is going to turn rather expensive. And if I need to guesstimate, we can now put the um, we can now put the sunshade up while the EFB is still in place. Awesome. How can we get it down again though? Okay, so the click spot is located on the side of the sunshade. Here it is. That's interesting, but okay. All right, so that is certainly new. What else do we have? Dual advisory ice detection system. Yeah, we're going to keep that. Acceleration height. I'm going to turn the default to 1000. FLS, TCAP, LDAV. All right, so that's the options we know about. Cabin, we're going to have a look into the cabin in a few moments. But for now, let's just go ahead and... Um, for now, let's just go ahead and go through the rest of the options over here. Okay, so control options are next. SDS, rudder damping, scrolling acceleration, lots of new stuff that we can find in here. Okay, so first of all, control position left, yes, we are flying from the left. EFIS barometric control linked, we are definitely going to do that. Okay, so SDS and rudder damping, that's going to be the next interesting question. We'll have to play around with those a little bit as we fly along, but... Certainly the rudder damping is something that we have to keep in mind. Scrolling acceleration, I do suppose that um, would accelerate what we do up here. So now the scrolling acceleration is out. I'm scrolling pretty much as fast as I can. Let's go ahead and turn that on and see what's going to happen. Oh yeah, that goes much faster. Now if you're wondering, this is an ease of life feature only. The real airplane doesn't have something like that. In the real airplane, that option would be off, and you would always scroll in the same um, in the same speed. So basically, one notch of turning over here equals either a hundred or a thousand on the altimeter, like that. But very nice to have something like that. I do suppose, especially with the radios, it might just really help. Let's do a little bit of scrolling here. Okay, the radios still work the way they did in the previous versions. By the way. On the radios, the real Airbus does have a scrolling acceleration. Okay, so, radio altimeter callouts, we're gonna leave them as they are. Units, well, pounds, we don't need pounds, we need kilogram over here. Distance, meters, pressure, hectopascal, okay. GSX menu, that is completely new as well. So, service sequence. Okay, well, we do obviously want uh, fueling and catering before the boarding. Suppose that's new as well. Auto disconnect ground power unit on pushback, sounds good. Auto deboard, sounds good. Auto connect GPU on arrival, sounds very good. Okay, auto catering while refueling. No, we don't need that. Wait for refueling before boarding. We don't need that either. We can do fueling and boarding at the same time. Auto select ground handling agent, very nice. All right, cabin announcement, that is new as well. And we do want them enabled and we don't want to mute them on task switch. Okay, so quite a lot of new options that we've got available in here, which do seem very, very good. Okay, so then let's go ahead and have a look into the uh, rest of the EFB. So ground services is a little bit changed here as well. Engine fan heating. Now that option is rather important there. I actually had to do fan heating for the first time <laughs> in my life since I moved to flying Airbus. So engine fan heating basically means that you've got a ground staff with the preconditioned air unit, pretty much like an air conditioning unit for the airplane, and he can heat up the uh, fan blades from the outside. And that serves to de-ice the fan blades, because fan blade icing is a possible issue. And now Phoenix have vastly improved the icing model they set, so it absolutely makes sense to have that. Let's turn that on for a moment. Can we see anything here? No, okay, looks like there is no 3D model associated with it. But okay, let's turn that off again, and off we go. Mass and balance menu looks pretty much unchanged compared to earlier versions, but what is new there is the send to MCDU button. We'll play with that a little bit later on. Okay, so panel states, it's got a look new layout, but the rest is still unchanged. Alright, so th this much about all the options we've got over here. 
We'll go over the remainder of the apps later on, but also here we've got the Send to MCDU button now, which is surely going to turn out pretty, um, pretty useful. Okay, looks like the uh, flight plan is automatically imported into the um, pilot brief app. Where's my app icons? Well, I can still access them, but icons are gone. Hey! Okay, well, suppose we can still work with this. And it did lock me out of Navigraph, so let's quickly sign back in again. Alright, excellent. So, with that, we have had our first look through the electronic flight pack. I suppose what you're all waiting for probably is the cabin, so hey, tell you what, let's not delay that any further. Let's go straight back to the cabin, because that is where they've done a lot of work. Alright, so here we are. Well, most important question first. Can we somehow access the laboratory? No. Okay. Well, it was worth a try. It was worth a try. But look at that. Great new detailing on the um, drum seats over here. Overall, the cabin looks really much improved. Unfortunately, the cabin attendant panel, however, doesn't seem to be... No. Can't click anything on here. Well, that's too bad. But anyway. Um, call system, however... Let's see if that works. No, doesn't look like it. Okay, so just a 3D model, but without functions. Well, in any case, let's um, move into the cabin a little bit more and just appreciate the look of those seats. I mean, this is some phenomenal texturing over here and some phenomenal 3D artwork that Phoenix have just put in. Likewise, the windows are looking really, really good. Can't move the sunshades, but honestly, who needs to? And there's even some dirt on here. Look at that. That is definitely fixed dirt on the windows. Even the little pressure equalization hole that you've got down here is there in 3D. Wonderful. That's really wonderful modeling. Also, repainters now have a lot more options to work on um, creating cabins associated with the airlines in question. So, does the... Oh, look at that! The ground service switch works! Alright. Well, in that case, if the ground service switch works... Gotta shut that down again. So, ground service switch on, and this should now give us power in the cabin, while there is no power on the flight deck. Now, obviously, during night, it, that would be a lot easier to see, so tell you what, let's quickly go into the weather settings and make it night. Okay, that's our emergency lights right down here. The emergency lights are still shining because they are charged by light shining on them, so obviously they do go on over here. The only thing I'm wondering about is if we got the ground service switch up here, that means we also gotta have a light switch somewhere over here, but the panel here is not clickable. Well, that is interesting. Can we do something here? No. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, doesn't make 100% sense to me. I mean, if you've got a maintenance bus switch, then you should probably also have a light switch in the cabin. But okay. So be it. We can live with that for now. Anyway, that does seem to promise great things coming up with uh, future updates. Or at least I'm pretty sure about that. Alright, so let's power the airplane back up. And then we'll see what's gonna happen next. Alright, so, that much about um, Roy van Kahn. Look at the ceiling in the front galley. Okay, well, let's, let's try that once more. Ceiling in the front galley. There's got to be a light switch somewhere here. But where? That's the thing now. In the A330, that would be all on that panel over here. 
Yeah, that's not simulated either. But okay, you sat at the ceiling. But where are the light switches? Is there any light switch here? Those buttons don't seem to work. Okay, well... No. Okay, I can't find that, but so be it. We're gonna come back to that. We are gonna come back to that. I'm sure if it's not there yet, then it will be there soon. All right, so then let's go ahead and um, actually start working on the airplane for a little bit. So we do have power available now. APU fire test. Is looking good. So, in terms of frequencies, we're flying offline, so don't need to set anything there. By the way, interesting that the brightness of the um, com over here doesn't change with um, changing the intake lights. Normally that should happen, because this is rather dark right now. Normally when you turn this up, the um, backlighting of the radio panel should um, turn up a little bit as well. But, okay, so be it. Then we're just going to leave those off. All right, so, start on the APU. 21, 22, 23, start it. And here we go. So that's gonna take a little while now for the APU to start up. In the meantime, let's quickly go into the um, EFB again, and we're gonna go on to the Fenix app. And then, how much fuel do we want to take? Well, Lovely that we can edit this now. So, give me 6,000 kilos, please. That's looking good. Passengers and cargo looking good. Alright. Apply and load aircraft. And you can do that in... Um, I tell you what, you can do that using GSX, please. No idea how long GSX is going to take to load the plane, but I'm sure we're going to find out. Alrighty, so then let's go ahead and um Okay, that's a comment there from Reise and Drohnen videos in the um chat. I don't know if someone already said it in here. Phoenix corrected an error. The sensitivity is minus twenty instead of plus twenty in their Discord server. Well tell you what, I'm gonna have a very quick look into that, because that might be a significant handling change. For our um, for our airplane, tell you what, let's quickly go on to the um, let's quickly go on there. Okay, indeed, checking the knowledge base, they have actually changed the sensitivity recommendation. So, guys, very important over here. Um, that's something that um, Reise and Drone videos just pointed out. Initially, when the thing came out, Phoenix recommend recommended a sensitivity setting of plus 20. Looks like they just changed that and they're now recommending minus 20 on the X and Y axis. So let's go ahead and quickly reset that before we continue with our airplane setup. Alright, minus 20 and minus 20. Alright, done. Save and apply. Resume. Okay, cool. So that's done. All right, cool. So we did request GSX boarding. Okay, refueler is here. Looks like it's gonna take a little bit longer for them to finish everything today. And it does seem that the moment I ordered this, the sim became a little bit more laggy. But look at those animations there. That's quite a good job. Look at that. That's new, isn't it? Just sitting here watching the, um, just sitting here watching the animation, because that's looking pretty, pretty cool. I tell you what, let these guys plug in. We'll just go into the, um, drone camera view again. I want to see that in greater detail. But my frame rate is uh, really stuttering right now. 
ever since we requested this, my frame rate has really gone down. Okay, are they gonna plug in now? Are they gonna plug in? Nah, almost. Almost. They hit the right spot, but I tell you honestly, when I first saw this, I kind of thought like we would start seeing an animation now. Okay, so they have started the refueling process. I mean, this is quite an amazing um, interaction between the Phoenix and the um, between the Phoenix and GSX. This is quite amazing. We have to give them that. All right, APU available. Let's go ahead and turn that thing on. APU bleed on. Awesome. Okay then, let's go ahead with our safety checks. So, oxygen pressure is at 1800 PSI. Hydraulic quantities are looking good on all three sides. And then the engine oil quantity is looking good as well. By the way, is anybody of you flying an actual IAE-powered Airbus? Would, I would be very interested to know in whether you can actually see all those numbers here on the ECAM engine display while the FADEC is powered off, as you can see in the top there. Because Airbus does have those uh, separate buttons, the uh, FADEC ground control buttons that we got here in the back, that we can turn on. And if we turn those on, you can see the engine controls have now powered up. But in the A330 at least, the FADEC is also going to power the indications on the bottom there. So in order to check the oil quantity during our pre-flight inspection, we would actually have to turn the FADEC engine power on, provided that the airplane is powered for more than five minutes already. Because when you power the airplane up, the FADEC also powers up, but five minutes later it's automatically going to power down. Alright, so, that much about the, um, that much about the general, um, safety issues. So, the flap lever is in agreement, the ground spoilers are retracted, and the parking brake, let's release that for a moment. Check the uh, brakes manually. Alright, we do have pressure. And park and brake back on. Here we go. Awesome. Cool, then down into the ATSU. Let's see how that has changed. Previously we couldn't request weather. There used to be buck in that. I do hope that that's been fixed, but let's go ahead and start the data initialization and then later on we are going to talk about the um, we're going to talk about the weather request. Right, so here's the data. Then weather request. And we're looking at Lima Golf Alpha Victor. And I want a Matar and a Tough. Alright, request that. So, message. Okay, that's preliminary load sheet. Don't need that yet, though. And weather data, here it is. Can't print it yet. I kind of hoped when I saw that excellent new model of the printer, I really hoped like we would be able to print something out. But, okay. In any case, here's our weather, QNH 1020. Let's go ahead and pre-select that. We go 1020, set three times. Okay, awesome. So, let's go ahead and start over here. We're sitting in an A320 IAE V2500 engines. And apparently it deleted my ARAC data when I, when I tried to update it. But that's okay, we can work on the older database as well. The airways shouldn't have changed much in lower airspace in uh, Greece. Might find some slightly different SID designators, but that shall not be our problem. Okay, so that thing is uh, working now. AEE224, cost index 20, and let's see what our planned cruising level is, and I'll look into the EFB for that. And the icons are back. Awesome. Alright, so, cr plant cruising level 210, that's rather low, but that is fine. Alright, so let's have a look into the route now. What the real airplane does when the flight plan tries to uplink something that is not in the database is that you would simply get a discontinuity. So, we'll have a look into um, if we have any in a few moments. Runway 3 right is going to be our departure runway, and then we've got a KR2 Juliet departure. Right, insert that, and... Doesn't look like there's any discontinuity here, only from Copa onwards, and that is our arrival anyway. So, let's go right into the Navigraph. Hey, I did that in a moment. 
I already approved that at the beginning of the stream. Well, let's do it again, see what's gonna happen. So, Phoenix Simulations A320 was successfully linked with your Navigraph account. Alright, here we go. And it's automatically inserted our routing as well. Things do seem to look a tiny bit different here. Did it by any chance? No, it did not automatically select um, charts. That would have been too nice, but don't worry about that. We can do that stuff ourselves. Alright, so departure charts. And where are we? Kea, 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 Kea. Here's one, but that's not the one we need. Kea to Juliet, here it is. Okay, looking good. So, based on Sierra Alpha Tango VOR. So, that's right turn out 046 to 1100. Let's go ahead and compare that. Come on. Plan mode should give me a map before the IRS is aligned. Long before the IRS is aligned. But don't quote me if we have to have it enough by that time. Okay, apparently we do. Alright, that's fine, then I haven't said anything. Alright, so, then, straight at uh, 400 feet above the ground, then, track 046 to 1100, that looks about right to me. Maximum 210 knots in the turn, that's what we have. And then it's gonna be onto the 084 track till 14 GM from Caristos, below 4000 feet, and that is what we've got in here. And then a right hand turn towards Kea, below 6000 feet, and that's what we have in here. Awesome. Okay, then for our arrival, it's going to be a runway 14 in use over in um, course. At least I am rather sure it is. Let's quickly cross check the weather data there. Yep, 130 at 10. That is about as runway 14 as it gets. Okay, looks very good. Then let's go ahead and continue with our setup. So, Navigraph charts go over to our destination. Couple ground charts, as always. And then, for the approach, we'll have the RMP approach, Romeo 1 4. That's about as easy as it gets. And starting at battery. So, let's see what our star is gonna be then. From Copa, Copa 1 November. Where is that located? Here it is. Copa 1 November. Okay, and then the battery transition. Looks excellent. So, RNAV 1.4. Copa 1 November. And battery has automatically been selected. Awesome. That is new, isn't it? That it automatically selects the um, transition. Because that is exactly what a real Airbus would do. Okay, so let's go ahead with the emergency procedures. And for that we can have a look at our departure chart once again. Or maybe even make it easier and go into the uh, reference chart. So what do we have there? At 20 miles we'll start getting high terrain. So I might just use something that is a little bit shorter than that. Now... What I can very much recommend you to use is the website of Blackbox711. So that's uh, blackbox711.com and he's first of all a great YouTuber, but secondly he is really doing an awesome job with things like um, providing us engine out information. So if we do have a look into him over here on his website, then we go on Airport Infos, really appreciate that one, and then just have a look into Athens. Then down here, runway 3 right, okay, at 8 DME Sierra Alpha Tango, right turn procedure radial 3402 Kilo Echo Alpha at 15 DME enter holding. Okay, so that much we can certainly come up with. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and program that. So we're first of all going to 8 DME Sierra Alpha Tango. So runway track is 032, so let's do Sierra Alpha Tango slash 032 slash 8. Gonna put that in here, and let's see. Man, those are close, close to one another. Okay, quick cross check data GPS monitor. Where are we? Thirty seven north, twenty three east. So we're looking at that one. Thirty eight twenty four. So that's a station in question, and looks like the bug has still not been fixed. Okay, so secondary flight plan used to have a bug. 
But uh, show that once again. So I'm trying to insert a waypoint just beneath the departure runway. And we just created that, PBD01. I should be able to insert that on line 2, and it should just appear as a normal waypoint, but looks like the Phoenix is still messing up the flight plan then. So, well, we need to help ourselves there. PBD01, let's put it in here, and here it works. Isn't exactly the best thing, but hey, as long as it works, I suppose I'm happy with it. Okay. Then we can go ahead and create the uh, rest of that routing. So, next up we're supposed to proceed on radial 3402 Kilo Echo Alpha until 15 DME. So, Kilo Echo Alpha, radial 340 opposite to that would be 140, so we're well within 10 degrees, I'm happy with that. And uh, Kilo Echo Alpha slash minus 15. Here we go, and that's going to be the point where we enter the holding. And that's going to be, well, 340 radial inbound, so looking at, uh, well, our course was 149, let's take that over here as well. Okay, so, awesome. And then from that we can return to Athens if we need to. And that's going to be an ILS approach, Yankee 03 right, happy with that. Okay, and that is our inbound now created. Okay, cool. Then, let's go ahead onto the flat plan page. I am going to draw an extended center line over here. And too many wrong buttons. Here we go. So, Lima Golf Alpha Victor 03 right. Here we go, and then Radio 032. That's going to be the extended center line. Looks awesome. So, Performance initialization page. In the real world, that is not uplinked, but in here we have that send to MCDU button. Let's use that. And look at that. Filled out for us. Nice. Alright then, let's also go ahead and request our wins. And then finally, let's go ahead and do our departure performance. So, three right, dry is correct, synchronize with the load sheet, synchronize with the live weather, intersections. Yeah, tell you what, let's do a Delta 5 intersection. Okay, awesome. So, that thing is calculated. But flaps 3 takeoff, that seems rather excessive. No, don't want that. Let's do flaps 2. And let's also go packs on. Alright, calculate that. So that looks better. Send to MCDU. Obviously this is, again, a simulator shortcut. In the real world, that doesn't work. You do have uplinks in the real world, but you don't have... Um, you can't just send it from the EFB to the MCDU. But tell you what, if it works, then it works. I'm happy with it. Okay, cool. So that stuff is now done. Aircraft position invalid, yeah, let's see, is it even finished yet? No, hasn't even finished aligning, so nothing to complain about. Okay, so initial climb is going to be 4000, we said. Here we go, and all of this is selected. Okay, one more minute for the IRS alignment to complete. The boarding has also finished already. Go ahead and close that door. And a quick check, by the way, if we hit the video button, okay, it looks like the screen doesn't work. In the real world, that works, obviously. But so be it. All right, so we can live with that. IRS has finished aligning. Enough accuracy upgraded. Thank you, GPS primary. Thank you. We gotta carefully monitor the takeoff shift, by the way, before we actually go. But with that, we are now pretty much done for a pushback. So, very quick panel setup here. Batteries are charging nicely, that means they actually do work. Alright, and the time and date of the year, 
are correct. 28th of February. Do we need the CBDLC? Not really, do we? Well, in any case, we're gonna leave it. We're just going to turn it on, but gonna leave it like that. Ground cloud of suppression, sure enough, comes on. Tikas on the left side, all selected, and the squawk. I'm just going to go for something IFR. Okay, excellent. So with that, we are pretty much all prepared. And then I'd say we can slowly go for our departure briefing. And in order to start that, I'm actually looking for where my uh, checklist is located. But found it, so let's go. Okay, so starting the briefing then. Um, what's our plan? Well. Just a second here, computer just, the computer just hung itself up, but looks like here we go again. All right, you guys can still hear me, I assume? Yeah, you can hear me. Okay, so then let's go ahead with our departure briefing. So takeoff runway 03 right, KR2 Juliet departure, climbing 4,000 feet, MSA up to 4,000, and extra fuel and time. We should have plenty available. And it is nine minutes only. Okay, so be it. Well, happy with that. So, no hotspots for the plant taxi. Stop margin for reject the takeoff. Do we have that anywhere here? Um, no. Or do we? Things do look a little bit interesting. Or a little bit different now, but... Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, so we don't have any information available on the stop margin. That's certainly something that they should add with a future update, because it is one of the vital parts of our considerations when planning our takeoff. But okay, for an immediate return, Athens is our best option. Uh, we have nothing special or non-standard, and we don't have any threats for the departure as well. Yeah. Miscellaneous part, I'm going to do a little bit of hand flying here to see how the airplane behaves now, and that's it. Any questions? No, excellent. Okay, cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity. So that's 5,960 kilogram balanced. Seatbelts on ADIRS. NAV, barrel QNH 1020. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. All right then, let's go ahead and order GSX for our pushback. And then we'll see what's going to happen. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, very warm welcome aboard the CG and Airlines Flight 224 to Coast. My name is Emmanuel and I'm your captain today on, the, on board this Airbus A320 aircraft. We're almost ready for pushback. We are just finishing up the latest paperwork. And in the meantime, I would like to ask you to sit back, relax, make yourself comfortable. And we will get back to you prior to landing with the latest weather information. Thank you again for your attention. Thank you for being on board. And if there's anything we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask any of our cabin crew. All right, so that's our crew dealt with, or our passengers, I should say. Then let's have a look into the load sheet, which is surely here by now. Yes, here it is. Okay, load sheet. So that's uh, 59.2. So we did get a little bit heavier. 59.2 and 32.2. All right, six tons of fuel. Takeoff CG 30.7 and 65.0, which does make sense. Got a little bit heavier. Let's just go ahead and synchronize that up. Calculate. Okay, data remains unchanged. Perfect, so we can stay with this. Okay, except the load sheet, we can stick to our performance. And then 30% uh, on the trim, so we're looking at minus 0 0.4. Okay, minus 0 0.3 is what they have by default, that's good enough. Okay, we can stick to that. So then, let's go with the nose to the left side, please. Ground equipment seems disconnected mostly. External power can go. Ground cockpit, go. So, please confirm, doors hatches are closed, ground equipment removed, bypass pin is installed. Alright, that's all confirmed, and we are ready for push. Roger, ready to push.
Oh, that's interesting. No, don't in don't interrupt. What's that? What's that doing? Okay, parking brake released. Let's see what's gonna happen. Cabin crew all lost in flight. No clue if they're actually gonna do it like that. Okay, B4 start checklist. Park and brake released. Take off speeds and thrust. V1 137, VR 137, V2 141, flex 55. Windows. Closed. Beacon on. B4 start checklist complete. Alright, and now we get to the IAE engine start, which is a little bit different from uh, what you're used to from the CFMs. So let's go for it. Engine 2 start. So, what you will notice now is the airplane is going to run up on the N2, but it is going to dry motor the engine before injecting fuel. We're looking at maybe about half a minute of dry motoring, so about 30 seconds. As soon as the N2 remains approximately steady, I am going to run the chrono, so I would say about now. And then let's see how long that dry motoring is actually going to take before fuel is inserted into the engine. So it should be approximately 30 seconds. Okay, this went a little bit faster now. It may be that the engine starts quicker when you do the uh, first flight of the day, so when the engine is actually cold, like it is right now. We're gonna see that in case we have the time for a flight back, but uh, we'll have a look at that by the time we get there. Okay, so, engine start is about completed on engine number two. That's the uh, generator coming online and avail. Very nice. Okay, engine one start. Let's time the entire engine start. By the way, nice to see that the avail light is coming on online on time now. That used to be a little bit delayed, if I'm not mistaken, on the uh, previous versions. So very nice to see that that is working fine. Now it's going to be interesting if the engine number one is going to do any motoring or not. In the meantime, parking brake set, you can lower the airplane, remove all equipment and advise when clear please. The engine start actually looks pretty quick to me, at least from uh, what I'm what I'm used to on the IAE engines, but it is coming up. All right, so That's the sound of the generator and the avail light shows. Very nice. All right, cool. So, the pushback tuck is gone. Crown cockpit, you're clear to disconnect. Show me the sign on the right side with a pin and have a wonderful day, please. Bye bye. And there he comes. Awesome. Okay, so the pin is seen after start checklist. Anti ice off. Ecam status checked. Pitch trim. That's thirty percent. Rudder trim neutral after start checklist complete. So flight control track. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. And, and now comes the rudder. Let's see how that works. For left, for right, neutral. Okay, alright, so everything is disconnected, everything is gone. Lights on and taxi. So the IAE Airbus will normally start taxiing on idle thrust. And look at that, it does. Not a single bit of thrust required. Let's see that from the outside. Awesome. By the way, when I say not a single bit of thrust required, I obviously mean not a single bit of thrust above idle, 
because the IAE engine is known for having a rather high idle. And it rolls very nicely. By the way, it may be coincidence, but it accelerates at a very similar rate to a heavy A330. Obviously it may just be coincidence, but it is um, kinda what I feel this to do. Alright, so, just gotta reposition that microphone for a bit. My apologies for that. So then, we'll take the first exit to the left from the apron here. It rolls very nicely on idle. Really rolls very, very nicely. Okay, we go two taxiways straight and then out to the right hand side. In the meantime, if we zoom this all the way in, yes, we do have safe taxi. Perfect. So we do have the moving maps on the EFB as well now. That is excellent. Okay, part of the change log was that apparently we now have a different braking behavior. So let's have a look into how the airplane is braking now. I am going to look down a little bit so that you can see the top of the brake pedals when I'm going to apply a bit of pressure. So a little bit very slow inputs and very quick reaction of the plane. Okay. That's quite cool. Now, I don't know how well the A320 and the A330 compare in these points. On the A330, when you do apply some brake pressure, you can immediate, you can at first move the pedals in for a little bit and almost nothing happens, and then eventually you will reach a point where you get a little bit more drag, and that is about the point where the braking actually starts to happen. It does take a little bit of getting used to that, and it feels at least to me like if I just start braking a little bit now... Yeah, it does feel like Phoenix is modeling that behavior as well. So it looks like the 320 got similar behavior to the 330 there, and Phoenix is actually modeling it. That is very, very cool. Alright, well, let's see how well the plane accelerates if we just add a little bit of thrust here. Feels good. That really feels good. That's some 10% N1 added, and you do feel the effect, but with a slight delay from thrust application. Also, we just got the cabin ready signal. Oh, they actually call us. Hello. The cabin is now secure for takeoff. Thank you very much. Okay, where's the reset button? Here it is. A little bit different than in the A330. Alright, cool. And I'll tell you what, let's also put the PA up so that we can hear if they say something after takeoff. Totally forgot about that earlier on. Okay, so we're almost at the runway, haven't done the checklist yet, so um, let's quickly talk about is there any change from when we did the takeoff briefing? No. At least I don't think there is. Alright, remember the plane is going to accelerate in the turn, so I'm breaking it a little bit below the 10 knots, which are my target for the turn. Okay, we've got the full runway length, so we can remove the takeoff shift, and then we'll just bring the airplane to a stop for a second, and once we've stopped it, we are going to um, read the taxi checklist. Also a little bit um, quick there, stop it, but anyway. Okay, so, let's see. Everything looking good? Taxi checklist, please. Flight controls, checked. Flap setting, conf 2, radar and predictive wind shear. On and auto, engine mode cell, norm, ECAM memo, takeoff no blue. Taxi checklist complete. Okay, so, clear on the left. And clear on the right. Cabin crew, prepare for departure.
Interesting, now it does not accelerate by on, on its own. It might be going a little bit uphill. Let's just use a little bit of thrust there. Okay, lineup checklist. Take off runway, three right, full length. Tikas, Tara, Pax 1 and 2, on, lineup checklist complete. All right, we're at the full length, the takeoff shift is going out. And that is looking good. All right, guys, are you ready for departure? So we will go for the full length. By the way, is it me or is it a little bit strange that we do see reflections of the landing lights during daylight there? I mean, you don't see the lights of your car either, do you? Certainly you don't see the lights of a 737 or of an A330 during daylight. But, well, might just be simulator limitation. Alright, let's give it a go. Take off. So about 1.05 EPR, in order to stabilize the engine, looking good. Lovely sound, Manflex 55, SS Romeo Auto Thrust Blue, Thrust Set. One on it not. Checked. V1 rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Nav. Checked. Okay, 710 starting the right hand turn. A little bit zoom in on the displays there. Okay, 1100, further turn to the right. Frost line climb auto thrust. Flaps one, speed checked. Flaps one. By the way, I love the way the displays look now. Did you notice that they have completely reworked the look of the displays? And flaps zero. Speed check, flap zero. Alrighty, so we're going to do a little bit more hand flying here. And, um... We'll do a little bit of manual thrust as well. So we're approaching about a thousand to go. Auto thrust off. Let's do a thousand feet a minute. Just accelerate it up to the target speed and then we're going to aim to maintain that target speed. Look at how easy that is. And that's how it is in a real engine. In the real world, setting your thrust is pretty easy. You wait for the trend vector to be zero, and when you've achieved that, you just keep it. Engine reaction, especially in those thrust ranges that you are normally using during, let's call it, moderate rates of climb and moderate rates of descent, is almost immediate. And this is exactly what it feels like. So, first impression there on my very first handling of that thrust, Alt Star, is that it is going really nicely.
So we're only in 4,000 feet and they start selling stuff in the back already. Can you hear that? By the way, again, very easy to uh, fly, very easy to maintain speed. That's how an airplane feels. Very, very well done job there on uh, Phoenix side. I really like that. Okay, so let's go up to 6,000 feet, which is our next constraint. So, climb. So, going from a very low thrust to a pretty high thrust now. And you could see how quickly the engine responded when we put the thrust up. That is the difference in uh, flight idle, going from idle to um, a higher setting, to doing the same when you're in ground idle. Alright, approaching 1,000 to go. Let's bring that under control again. All star. And look at how quickly your EPR responds to pilot input. That is pretty accurate. Because EPR is usually quicker to respond than N1. Independent of the engine, but simply by the way how those measurements work. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so speed back towards 250. Now... Here's something for all you guys who haven't seen my video from earlier today. The EPR engines, or pretty much all engines that are actually driven by EPR, how do you fly them? Do you look at the top gauge, at the EPR gauge, or at the bottom gauge, the N1 gauge? Honestly tell you, you still fly them using N1. Because, and we can see that very well here when we are maintaining altitude, you can see barely any change in the EPR down there, but the N1 is really moving in great length. Let's play a little bit with that. You can see right now we are running 60% N1 and our speed is stable at about 257. Now, if we just want to reduce our speed a little bit more, look at my difference in the power lever, so the um, blue circles on the EPR gauge. Look at how... how moderate the change in EPR is and then look at the N1 change. So look at that for example. 2% N1 and the change in EPR is barely noticeable. Now I'm adding a little bit of power again. You can see it's much easier to fly the airplane based on N1 than it is to fly it based on EPR. And that is the big thing I want you to take away from that. Right, so let's go ahead and continue our climb now. Looking for cruise level 210. So, auto thrust, autopilot. And here we go. Alright, climb, open climb, AP1, A thrust. And out we go. So, my first impression then on the. My first impression then on the um, way the. My first impression. Oh boy on the way the um, IAE engines work is actually a pretty good one. The thing seems to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay, so that is awesome to notice. So then, looking uh, down into the chat again, Victor is asking, as a member of PMDG's tech team, do you believe that PMDG can implement the new tech as IAE engines too? Well, the question is in which airplane PMDG would implement that, because the 737 doesn't have that. And Parthi, was all the talking from the cabin crew from the Phoenix? Yes, any cabin crew you heard was actually of the Phoenix. So, set standard. Standard cross check, passing level 93 now. Checked. Alright, and we're about to pass 10,000, so flight level 100. Now as we do that, lights off, can release passengers as well. Is there any announcement associated? No, don't seem to hear one. Okay, so be it. Alright, so copy active, can remove the fix page, and that's it. So, up here on 350, cruising 2-1. And LGKO14 is coming in here. Okay, so awesome. With that, we are pretty much all ready to go. 
So my first impression is really good. Let's go to the back and listen to those sounds in the cabin for a bit. Do note there is a little bit of light bleeding through over here. Beautiful cabin. Let's see how those engine sounds change as we go to the back. Hmm, that's strange. Normally when you go to the back of a plane, the sound should, should change quite a bit. Like, that howl that we hear from the front should be replaced by a roaring sound when we're in the back. But, that doesn't really seem to happen. But, fully apart from the sounds, just look at that beautiful view outside here. Awesome looking cabin. Really awesome. I really feel like I'm sitting in the plane right now. This is really great. They've done an awesome job here with that virtual cabin. Let's see, what do we have in the aft galley then? Well, it certainly looks like an Airbus, that much I can say. Can we do anything here with the slides? They're armed automatically. Okay, it doesn't look like it, but... Well. And I do suppose the toilets aren't uh, modeled here either. Okay, so be it. Well, I can live with that. So let's go back to the front and listen to the sounds once more, if there is any change in the engine sound as we go to the front. I do believe a little rumble just went away. But other than that, there is... I mean, listen to how quickly the sound is changing here. Like, listen to this in the cockpit. And this in the cabin. It's literally like you're stepping through that door, and with that, the sound changes rather abruptly. That might be a little bit overdone at the moment. A little bit overdone. But anyway, it is um, it is good to see that they worked on that nonetheless. So, as nice as Grease looks, let's get that down. Again, for those of you who only tuned in at a later point, we are now able to um, change the way how the electronic flight deck is mounted to the um, to the to the frame, so we can now use the window shades while the um, EFB is in place. can still remove the EFB though, but this is interesting. So, looking at this, normally the amount of the um, tablet on the window frame should obviously stay there when the EFB is removed. But it doesn't. Well, that's an interesting logic there. Okay, well, here we go. Okay, so... Speed, vertical speed. 1,000 to go. All checked. So, question in the comments there. Are you able to request an ATIS with a plane? Yes, you absolutely are. ATSU, weather, weather request, LGKO. Here we go, and I'm happy with the meta. Send request. Over to the message tab. Well, this is interesting. Still zero AO zero AOC messages, but that just doesn't make sense because, well, here they are. So, not sure what that message top there is doing. Probably still bugged. Okay, so, course, 130 at 9, 10 kilometers, few 1800, 16 degrees, 1020. All right, all star. I like the way how the displays look now, by the way. This is a lot more realistic than it used to be. This is really a lot more realistic. Mach. 
All right. So, awesome. Um, Gideon, is the printer working? Well, at least I couldn't find out how. Um, I don't think it is. And Coda101, once you restart your sim, it sorts stuff out. Yeah, I did restart it a couple times already, so that is um, not the reason for any problems. And Pathbiv, where can I find a checklist like the one you follow? Well, I am using the original Airbus checklist, and you can download the um, original Airbus EQRH on the um, App Store. So you can download the original one there, and the demo version has all the normal checklists, except for the departure change checklist and the aft landing checklist. Now the departure change checklist, let's be honest here, most flight simulators don't use it anyway, and the aft landing checklist, um, yeah, that's just radar and predictive wind shear, so easy going. All right, so, approaching the top of the sand there, 50 miles to run. So let's just go ahead and um, start cross-checking our FMS. It's a little bit of a pity that I went for such a short flight in terms of um, the length of explanations we can do. On the other hand side, though, I did want the opportunity to be able to put two flights in. So I had to take a little bit shorter there. Right, so, for the arrival, we are coming in. Via Kopar. And the Kopar 1 November is simply from Kopar towards battery, maximum 185, error above 4000. So, Kopar, and then to battery. Well, that doesn't look right. Uh, battery has 200 knots in here. That's not correct, should be 185. Probably due to the uh, database not being up to date, so let's not blame that on Phoenix, please. So, 185 knots. Speed error at battery. Why? You should have... Well, I don't know why it's doing that. Should be able to follow that constraint. But, okay. Alright, so for the arrival, it's an RMP approach, runway 14. That's from battery, interestingly enough, maximum 200 knots on this chart. Well, I don't care. Towards Infur, Kilo Oscar 141, and then down to the runway. So we've got Infur, 141, and down to the runway. 3.1 degree glide versus... Is there any... Oh yeah, 3.1 degree glide is correct. Okay, awesome. We're not certified for LPV approaches, so we're going to use Cat Charlie Minimum, 667. And the go around. Kilo Oscar 142 as an overfly point, and then a right hand turn to Lacken. Clumber 3000. And that is exactly what we have in here. Awesome. Don't need anything on the nav route page. Course 1 4 is in. So, for the descent itself, let's see. Um, managed is looking good. So, 1020. 16. That wind looks interesting there. Certainly not what we have in mind. Let's just check what the requested weather looks like again. Okay, 130 at 9. Okay, so, it's absolutely going to be Config 3 approach. They do say that they worked on the drag profile in the descent, so that is definitely something that I want to examine over here. So, Config 3 it'll be, and barrel minimum 667. And for the go-around, engine out, acceleration altitudes, well, 3,800 is MSA, 3,000 is missed approach altitude, so we're going to use 3,000 on that. Alright, here we go. Fuel prediction, so, look at that. All of a sudden, it's uh, 3.2 tons and an hour 35. But for some reason, it is not calculating any predictions for our alternate. Well, let's go ahead and enter that manually then, so that we get some better data. Okay, so, let's see, um, alternate, 2.7 tons. That's quite a bit. Here we go, so now it's 14 minutes extra, that's looking good. Copy the active, and that's it. Alright, excellent. So, this is looking pretty good. Um, let's use auto brakes. I'll tell you what, let's go for auto brake medium, because I want to see if there is any effect of the um, braking on the um, brake temperature now. 
because that is something that previously didn't used to be um, correctly done in the Phoenix, so hopefully it is now. 4.2 tons on arrival, so we're burning 300, landing weight 63.5, well 63.4. By the way, that new um, keyboard here, that's looking really good. Okay, medium auto brake, idle or no reverse, auto thrust on, config 3, and I'll tell you what, we'll go auto thrust off. Alright, so, 1500 meters required and 3, uh, 2390 meters available. That's looking very good. Okay, awesome. So, are you ready for the approach briefing then? Yes sir, please go for it. And um, Drakosha1020 asking in the comments, why are you using flaps 3 instead of flaps 4? Uh, that's going to be a topic for a video that I'm going to do over the next few days, maybe tomorrow or latest the day thereafter. So I'll explain that in a separate video. The very short version is because it saves some um, fuel. Okay, so, arrival briefing, MSA 3800, and we're running the Copa arrival for an on-off approach runway 14, minimum 667, and go around straight at, first waypoint is an overfly, then out to the right side, climbing 3000, extra fuel 15 minutes. Okay, guidance for the approach is going to be... Um, well, I tell you what, it's most likely going to be final approach, but I might opt for a visual approach on short notice. Um, landing flaps, config 3, stop margin. What do we have available here? Well, that's like 800 meters or so. Reverse us idle, auto brakes medium. We gotta do a backtrack at the end of the runway, or earlier, and then come back to the apron. No hotspots, nothing special. Any threats? No? Awesome. Right, briefing is complete. Only threat we can see, well, we can, it's daylight cavalcade, so it's not a threat, but terrain is a bit of a thing, so I'm going to ter turn the terrain display on over here. All right, and then let me quickly talk to the passengers. Ladies and gentlemen from Flight Act, this is your captain speaking. We'll start our descent towards course in a few moments, remaining flight in about 15 minutes. The weather over there currently very nice, clear skies, temperature 16 degrees centigrade. We'd like to thank you very much for choosing Eugene for today's flight, hope that you've enjoyed it as much as we did, and we look forward to welcoming you again on board of a future scheduled service. In the meantime, thank you very much for your attention, and we hope to see you again soon. Right, that's the cabin dealt with, and with that we are pretty much ready for uh, everything. Let's go ahead and start our descent, and then we'll see how good the new drag and descent profiles actually are. Just a quick check, make sure that we actually got the wind in. Yes, we do. Alright, down we go. Speed descent, alt flight level 100 blue. Thrust idle. I will use a little bit of a speed brake in order to get the airplane down onto the target speed. And from there on, we wanted to maintain the path in idle thrust. Passing level 200 descending. Fasten belts are coming on. So I'm just using speed brake to bring the speed right into the bracket. And then we'll see how it's going to work. And shipwrecked. First of all, that's a nice username. I do hope it refers to the Ailstorm song. If not, anyway. Um, hi Emanuel, how are you enjoying the new update? Well, it's my first flight with it, but my first impression there is that the engine model is done really, really well. They do seem to have done an awesome job with it. And your average person is asking, Hi, how is the performance compared to V2 Block 1? Well... I don't see much of a difference in terms of performance, but um, then again my RTX 4090 might easily overpower any such difference with frame rate generation. So it is worth pointing that out. And Regic, Regix, Ailstorm Mansion, time to have a beer. Well, how, how did it go again? Rum, beer? Quest and meet. All right, I'll not sing. This is not a this is not a sing a singing channel. We'll do karaoke with the cabin crew on the next layover again. All right, so 
quick look outside them. It is interesting looking into the front of those IAE engines and just seeing the difference to the CFMs. To give you an idea, the IAEs have a bypass ratio of approximately 4.5 to 1. So 4.5 parts of the air that are being um, ingested into the engines bypass the core and one part actually enters the core of the engine and is burned together with the fuel. Compared to that, the CFM56 got approximately a bypass ratio of 6 to 1, so easily gives you an idea of um, the engine's performance. But it is worth pointing out here that the IAE engine is more fuel efficient by approximately 3% than the CFM56 engine. Man, look at that wingtip. Seems to be a little turbulent here. Can we see that from the cockpit? Nah, not really, huh? Plane seems dead stable. By the way, very nice VNAV performance here. Just a very slight gain in speed. That is absolutely within the um, parameters of what I would expect in the real world. So this is actually looking pretty good. This is looking pretty, pretty good. A uh, gamer guy asking, if we don't have GSX for Phoenix, is this automatically going to come with it? Because I've not gotten any service on the ground yet. Um, I don't think so. And Drua 757, are you using the Thrustmaster Airbus throttles and stick? Any special sensitivity settings needed? Um, I'm not using the Thrustmaster throttles, but I am using the stick right now. And you can find the recommended sensitivity settings on the Phoenix blog. I can absolutely recommend you to read the introduction article over there. And it is going to it is going to advise you to use a sensitivity of minus 20 on both the elevator and the aileron axis. Ninja plays is saying, did you know that Phoenix offers their own comprehensive QRH in the EFB pilot brief app and documents? Actually, I didn't. So, pilot brief, documents, QRH. That is new. That is absolutely new. Okay, this is awesome. Is that a complete Havas QRH? Yeah, looks like it. Alright, this is awesome. I did not know that. And that is really cool. I mean, might be a little bit hard to find things here. But look at that. That's all our checklists. Okay, this is really awesome. No, I did absolutely not know that. I mean, they might have to work a little bit on navigating the document. But this is really cool. Is that normal procedures? Yes, it is. This is really cool, guys. I never knew about this. But the normal checklists, unfortunately, aren't exactly the Airbus standard checklists. For example, there is no after takeoff climb checklist anymore. Does anybody know if we're actually able to exchange those documents here? Because that would be really nice. Okay, reaching 10,000. Let's continue our descent. Going down to uh, 5,000. Set QNH. QNH 1020 cross check. 10,140 now. Checked. Okay, asking for more drag. By the way, might be me, but I think this is written a little bit um, small there. This should be a little bit bigger. And we're passing 10,000. So, lights on, constraints, we don't need the LS mode. More drag. Yeah, you'll get it in a few moments. GPS primary high accuracy mode select the norm. Approach checklist, please. So, battle ref. QNH 1020. Seatbelts on, minimum, barrel 667, auto brake, medium, engine mode selector, norm. Approach checklist complete. 
So, how high are we? 1,700! How did that happen? Okay. Well, we're gonna help it a bit. And tell you what, I wanted to do a little bit of hand flying anyway, so... Auto pilot off. Auto throttle off. Let's do a little bit of hand flying now. We have the speed restriction battery. That's gotta be my um, first target of meeting here. And then we can do flight directors off as well. So, bird on, set runway track. Hello? Hello? The cabin is now secure for landing. Alright, thank you. Okay, flaps one. Speed checked. By the way, this was interesting. We flew into the protection, but the airplane didn't really seem to react, did it? And people agree would disagree. Well, no. Okay, well, yes, it did order. It did retract the uh, spoilers already. Okay, so be it. Then we just gotta get them out again. Flaps two. Speed checked. Come on, okay. Spoiler lever in, spoiler lever out. All oh, this is interesting. It doesn't extend them at all anymore. Obviously, it auto-retracted the speed brake because we reached the um, minimum maneuvering speed, but normally, now that we're out of it again, we should easily be able to retract the spoilers and then extend them again. Because the condition that triggered this is over. Let's try that once more and if that doesn't work I'm gonna go for the landing gear. Okay, this seems to be a bug now. That is certainly not normal. Alright. In that case, gear down. Okay, so the volcano is in sight in the front. Altitude coming down to 4000. And here comes our vertical deviation. Perfect, this is what we're looking for. And down to 3,000, please. Interesting comment there from landing mission in in the chat saying he just landed the Phoenix and after landing it didn't stop saying retard. Well that's what we had on our very first Phoenix livestream. You remember that when we landed in Berlin and the thing just kept calling us a retard? Well I do sure hope that that buck is not back. But if if you did encounter that Try to go to um, try to go to the outside view and then back to the inside. I do seem to remember that that was the solution for the problem back in the day when it first appeared. And I sure enough hope that we do have spoilers on landing now, but we'll have to see. Looks like the plane does have quite a bit of drag from the landing gear now. You could see how I needed to use quite a bit of thrust here in order to maintain our um, to maintain our airspeed. Okay, passing waypoint 141, that should be in 3000. So we seem to be pretty much on profile, so the LDEF and VDEF over here are looking good. Three degree descent profile is looking good, quite a bit of headwind, and 
I do have to say the drag profile feels okay now. So let's go to the dreaded flaps 3 and see what's gonna happen. Speed check, flaps 3. And here we are. So let's zoom in a bit on that PFD. I'm going to use a little bit of thrust here off screen. Can hear it in the background, but tell you what, that pitch is looking good. That pitch is absolutely looking good. I like it. How much thrust are we using? 54%. Seems about right to me. That definitely seems about right. So, 440 people watching the stream. And I thought I am disappointing many people with my landings already when I'm just flying around 300 people in the A330. Well, let's see. First A380 landing then. At least in terms of people who are going to complain about my landing. Landing checklist. Eka memo. Landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. So, have a look at how I'm handling my thrust levers here. How I'm basically trying to maintain the thrust for as much as possible. But it shows you how it is rather easy just to set your target thrust and simply have the plane maintain its airspeed like that. That's how you do it in the real world as well. If you're constantly adjusting your thrust for as long as turbulence doesn't make it necessary to do so, aircraft flies superbly once a certain power setting is set. So once the right power setting is found, normally you don't even need to touch anything anymore. I can see we're losing a little bit of speed there, so I'm just adding in a percent or two. As you can see, that works pretty nicely. We've got to be careful though, we are flying the aircraft close to the backside of the power curve. So once we get into that, we will need more and more thrust just in order to maintain our speed. Right, a little bit of thermal here, you can see how we need to reduce power to about 40 and a tiny bit percent. Speed is slowly coming back. Checked. And our target power is set again, about 50%. Minima. Continue. Okay. A little downdraft here. One so, first landing. Settle down, please. Awesome. Okay, spoiler. Reverse green diesel. 70%. Sorry, 70 knots. Okay, manual brakes. So let's see what that did with our brake temperatures now. Down to 7 knots, fully into the turn. Look at that, we're losing quite a bit of speed. I like that. So a little bit of power on the outboard engine. Working very well. So, very easy to do 180 over here. Now a bit of power on the other side as well. And time to clean it up. I like the recordings, really like them. Uh, 
Alright, so after landing checklist. Radar and predictive wind shear off. After landing checklist complete. So no brake hot indication yet. The brakes absolutely will get hot after this, of course. Starting up APU, we've located the runway so strobe lights can go back to order. And welcome to course everyone. So that landing felt a lot, lot, lot nicer than the uh, previous versions did. The landing really felt a lot nicer, so they've done an excellent job with that. That approach pitch, 5 degrees, really made it an awesome feeling. That's really all I can call it, because that's really what it is. So very well done there. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab ourselves a gate. Probably gonna look for gate 5 or something. Yep, 5, here we go. Follow me, no thanks. Yeah, give me some handling operator, please. Where are they? Okay, I don't see anybody here. Well, that's probably just realistic, though. As always, you arrive at the gate, nobody there. Well, then we're just gonna stop here on our own. Okay, break set. Interesting, they're giving the disarm doors comment immediately when I set the brakes. Normally that should only happen once the engines are shut down. So now. But anyway, if the doors are disarmed, that means we can release the belts. Okay, engine's running down nicely. Parking checklist. Park and brake are trucks. Brake set. Engines. Off. Wing light. Off. Fuel pumps. Off. Pack and checklist complete. Power is available. Let's put the plane on external power. And here we go. Alright, they start opening the doors on their own now without any input. I do believe that is due to the automatic deboarding that we have asked for. But let's go for commence deboarding and see what's going to happen. So, forward cargo door is opening. All I'm missing now is some GSX guys who would actually come and start the deboarding. Alright, um, let's go inside, have a look at the brake temperatures. 200. No, that is not realistic. It's still rising, let's see what where it's going to peak at, but I would expect it to rise quite a bit quicker actually, quite a bit quicker. Okay, so, we're going to reset this, we're going to reset this, and then we'll start to plan our flight back. So, Back to Athens is the name of the game. But certainly a great fun to uh, fly that first... Great fun to fly that uh, first sector over here already, so absolutely have to say that. So, having a look into the return flight then, let me quickly go ahead and grab a flight number from uh, Flight Radar. So, course to Athens is um, Aegean 225 and the call sign 5 Golf Sierra. Well, I'm going to uh, program that off screen real quick. Let's see if any GSX services are still arriving, but it doesn't look like it. I do believe I turned that option on though. Let's have a quick look into the uh, EFB. So, um, where is it? Sim settings, GSX. Yeah, auto deboard is on. So, when enabled, deboarding will be called when the beacon light is turned off and parking brake is set. Yeah, so that should be the case. Yep, yeah, that definitely should be the case. Okay, not sure why it's not doing it. Um, really not sure. But well, so be it. Um, Hopefully next time then.
Okay, so quickly planning the um, quickly planning the next flight off screen, and then we can continue for our next sector. Cosine X20, we're on the Sierra X-ray, Delta Golf X-ray. And we're gonna fly this one with 180 passengers, so completely full load. Landing runway, probably gonna be three left, okay. And then we can build our flight plan. So that should be another like 35 minutes-ish flight, so I do hope that um, that is gonna go fine. So, a couple people um, saying in the comments there, I think GSX has a wrong position. Yeah, that might very well be. Um, I just don't know where it is in first place. I mean, where are the GSX guys? Over there. But what are they doing there? We selected gate 5 alpha, didn't we? Did they accidentally select gate 8 or something? This seems to be gate 8 over there, not 5 alpha. And the GSX menu is not opening anymore? No. Okay, so GSX is bucked once again. <sighs> How I love this thing. How I completely love it, man. Well, no further comment on that, huh? Just no further comment. But another thing I want to try. Well, that can not really be that healthy for the um, sunshade. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay, so doesn't matter. We'll just presume everything is right. And uh, I have no idea if we can actually load the plane or even start a pushback now. But doesn't matter. GSX messing us over isn't the first time. So we'll just leave it at that, huh? Is that doing anything on the ground menu, though? No, still have all the passengers on board. I'll tell you what, reset all. Here we go. That's definitely looking better. Okay, let's go ahead and import the next flight, then. Yeah, yeah, it's fine on the time. Okay, so let's have a look into this operational flight plan. This is course to Athens. Yeah, I think I put the wrong call sign in there. Should be Alpha Alpha Echo, I believe, for Aegean and not Alpha Alpha Golf. Yep, Alpha Echo Echo. Okay, I did mistakes on that flight number. Doesn't matter though, we can still change that. Zero fuel weight completely full. Looking good. And in terms of the fuel, the weather is good, we know that. If we take 5 tons, we will be good to go. So, mass and balance, and here we go. Plant fuel. Let's say that's gonna be 5,000. I do like the uh, new way of putting this in. I don't like the fact that it closes automatically when you put in 0 too much. Okay, 5,000, that's looking awesome. Great, so, apply and load aircraft. And we are going to do an instant loading here, because GSX apparently has messed up. So be it. We'll have to live with it. So, brake temperature is now 285 degrees. Well, I would still expect more than that. But, it's much better than what we had previously already. I would honestly have expected something about 400 degrees or so, but hey, so be it. We'll have to live with it, the way it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and prepare for the next flight then. Actually, not all that much to do. Refueling is complete. Okay, so this is mostly looking good. Then let's go ahead and request our performance in it. And we're also going to do the flight in it over here. So, on the flight here I had it correct. There I had Alpha Echo Echo, but it's fine. Active AOC flight plan uplink, that is awesome. Here we go, so Alpha Echo Echo 5 Golf Lima. That's the correct call sign. So, cost X20. 
back into the plan then. So, flight level 220 is our planned cruising level, and we can absolutely go with that. Right then, for routing, departure, runway 14, and we got a Copac departure. Let's see um, which one we have, though. So, departure, Copa. Can we just take the Foxtrot, the Arnav version? No, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. Alright, we take the first one here, the one with the visual turnout. So that's going to be Copa 3 Bravo departure. And that is what we've got. Looking good to me. And then for the arrival, it's going to be an Isla's Yankee approach, runway 3 left. Let's see which star they planned. It's a Varix 3 Charlie arrival. Let's go ahead and find that. Here we go, Varix 3 Charlie. And... Interesting, that's not selecting any VIA for us. Let's see what we've got now. Towards Kilo Echo Alpha. Okay, here we go. Insert. Normally that happens automatically on the real one. Okay, copy the route and then let's go ahead and um, let's go on. And Daniel asking in the comments, are you using the recommended minus 20 in the sensitivity? Yes, I am. Alright, so, um, we just got to create a place bearing distance waypoint over here, um, for the engine out route, and actually if we, okay, if we do check the, um, engine out routing, thanks again to Blackbox711 for, uh, providing that, here it is from his website, so, Romeo 14, acceleration in 2000, engine out, track 143 till 60 me, Kido Oscar Sierra, left turn to battery and hold, alright, we can absolutely set up that so kilo oscar sierra slash one four three slash six i'm gonna put that in here and then on towards battery to pick up the holding over there like that and finally i am going to program an immediate return back towards um, course, new destination, and then for the arrival we're going to select the Arnav Approach Rome 14, and that's it. Alright, cool. So, this time we are going to go for the uh, manual weights method here. So, 61 tons, 25 CG, 5 tons block fuel, and in terms of our, um, in terms of our final reserve and alternate 1.5, 1.1. So 1.1 1 .1 in here, 1.5 in here, and that gives us 8 minutes of extra fuel. I am perfectly fine with that. So then let's go back to our departures. Coast 1.4, dry runway, pack's gonna remain on, optimum config, synchronized load sheet is good, synchronized weather is also good, QNH now 1021. Let's go ahead and put that in, 1021. Okay, and we now get again a config 3 takeoff. No. Just no. Config 2. Right, so 2 down point 4, 55. We might just do 1 plus F as well if we can. Yeah, we can even do that. To tell you what, then we'll do 1 plus F. 63 degrees. So 1, 63. And our takeoff speeds are going to be 140, 140, 141. 140, 140, and 141. Alright, we keep the noise abatement procedure too, and the engine out acceleration is going to be 1912, like that. Okay, perfect. Nothing needed on the client page, and with that, our FMS setup is done. So then, I'd say we can go ahead with our departure briefing already. But before we do that, a very quick look into the chat there, if anybody's got an additional question. So, X-Dopes, where's the current flight going to? We are going from coast to Athens. And Pedro H. James, um, hi, anyone notice the PFD and ND with the text fonts a bit purple or blue tones? Yes, I absolutely noticed that, and I do believe it to be a feature rather than a bug. Um, if you're looking at the um, bottom of the display, that pretty much still looks normal, but if you're going to look at the top, everything looks a little bit, um, well... 
let's just call it less clear. But indeed, that is exactly how the real Airbus um, does things, especially when you're looking at it from an angle. So if you're looking at it like this, it looks, well, rather similar. But if you're looking at it like this, the effect on the top seems to be a little bit more prominent. And that is indeed something that I do observe in the actual Airbus as well. So that is not a bug. I do see it as a feature. By the way, talking about features, the brake temperature has risen to 295 now. 300 is the limit from which we can no longer take off, on the A330 at least. Might be different on the 320 family. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to put the brake fans on to start cooling it. The problem is, as soon as we put the brake fans on, what happens is... First of all, you can nicely hear them here. But the brake fans start cooling the brakes from the outer side. So now we no longer know the temperature of the inner side of the brakes. The immediate result of that is that the temperature at which we are permissible to depart reduces to 160 degrees compared to the previous, um, well, I'm not sure about the 320, 300 degrees on the A330, that's what I can say for sure. Alright, so, that much about um, that little topic with the, brake, with the brakes heating, so they do heat up now. That is good to know, because... Um, Proper handling of the brakes is one of the most important points of flying an Airbus. It's really, really important that you don't brake too much. Minimize the amount of brake applications you do. Alright, so, then I'd say we can slowly go ahead with our departure briefing. So, pilot monitoring can start over here. MSA 3600 and we're looking at a course runway 14 departure. So we do have the Copa 3 Bravo departure. We're going to do the initial visual turnout. First clear altitude is going to be something like 6000 or so. I'm just going to set that up manually over here. MSA as mentioned 3600 and in terms of extra fuel we've got 800 kilos in there. Alright, no hotspots on the plant taxi, however we have to come up with a solution for the pushback since GSX has stopped working. Stop margin for the rejected takeoff is plenty, engine out sits straight at 6 miles from course and then a right hand turn, uh, sorry, a left hand turn to battery and climbing 4000 is going to keep us safe all around. Immediate return is possible over the course, we are under the maximum landing weight and um, I have nothing special or non-standard. Do you see any threats for the departure? No? Excellent. Then we can do the cockpit preparation checklist, please. Okay, gear pins and covers removed, fuel quantity 5000 kilograms, seat belts on, ADIRS, NAV, Bagel reference, QNH 1021. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. Okay, starting the APU. Then give me the load sheet, please, provided that we have one. Oh, yeah, lots of messages actually. So, no delay required. Thank you very much. I knew that in advance. Arrival message is okay. So, load sheet preliminary, we can ignore that, and load sheet final. 61 tons, zero fuel weight, 180 passengers plus one child. Okay, so 61 is what we have, and the CG is 31.5. And then we've got a takeoff weight 65.8, and we've got 65.8 in here as well. Okay, um, takeoff CG 30.2. And that equals, yeah, down trim minus 0 0.4. Here we go. Okay, so our previous takeoff calculation was done at what weight? At 65.8. Okay, that's close enough. I'm happy to go like that. Okay, accept the load sheet. Thank you. So, cargo doors are still open. Are they still doing anything down here? No. Okay, so the question now with GSX not working anymore. I mean, we can try that once more. Loading menu, please wait. 
Nope. It just closes itself. I do believe the problem is uh, due to the wrong stand. Like, the GSX guys are standing way back over there, even though I selected stand 5 on the taxi in. I mean, anybody feel free to go back during on the live stream and check where the um, and check where the stand that I selected is but I'm pretty sure I selected stand 5 we're standing on stand 5 and well the GSX guys are standing over there I'm a little bit unsure if I should just restart the quartal engine but I am probably just uh, going to give that a try well so I thought because it just disappeared from my system tray Oh, this is interesting. This is GSX completely acting up again. Let me at least restart it. Start Quartal for MSFS. Doing that off screen right now. So, let's try that once more. GSX. Come on, baby. You can do it. Not really, huh? Oh, this is annoying. I really don't know what it is with GSX that I always have problems with it. Ground services. Tell you what. Connect talk. Is this maybe gonna do it? So, park and brake is set. Door is getting closed. Let's get rid of all the services here as well. Ground power unit. So, the APU is running. Why are my cargo doors opening again? Close. And stay closed, please. Here we go, that's better. GPU is removed. Okay, let's give GSX one more try. I just restarted the Quartal engine. Prepare for pushback and departure. Handling by OA. Are we getting services now? Yes, there is a tuck out there. So which stand did it recognize? No, don't interrupt pushback. Okay, can't check it anymore. Well, so be it. Okay, so that is probably as far as we get. And Neil Sky Aegean saying in the comments, GSX and Orbex course is not working. There is an issue with the airport file not getting recognized. Well, that is wonderful. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. GSX. Interrupt. Pushback. Yes. We'll just do pushback manually then. I don't care. I don't care. It's fine. Okay. So, ground cockpit. Uh, go ahead. So, please confirm all doors and hatches are closed, ground can be removed, and bypass pin is installed. Yes, Captain. That's all confirmed. Roger. Thank you. Brake temperature is 160 now, so we can depart. I'm going to keep the fan running for a bit, though. Cabin crew, all doors in flight. B4 star checklist. What is... Is there anything automatically calling GSX now? That thing is such a pain. Alright, GSX, where can I... Come on, GSX. I don't want you here anymore. Everything off. Please. Such an annoying program. Okay, so, before start checklist, please. Park and brake, set, takeoff speeds and thrust. 140, 140, 141, flex 63, windows. Closed, beacon on, before start checklist, complete. Ground from cockpit, go ahead, sir. So, um, we are cleared for pushback, facing runway 14, park and brake set. Okay, release brakes, brake released. 
Roger, brake release, down, start on the push. Okay. So, here we go. Engine to start. Now let's see if the engine is going to do some motoring. I'm going to start the uh, chrono straight away. Is that a GSX tuck? Please. I'm just looking inside. I don't care. I don't care anymore. That's interesting. EGT is rising. EGT should drop as the engine is motoring. Because we are now blowing fresh air into the engine. So obviously the EGT should start dropping straight away. But look at this. The engine is now motoring for quite a longer time than it used to do while we've been on the ground in Athens for our first flight of the day. What's this doing now? Did it just stop the push on its own? Turn please. That's better. So, still motoring. Okay, can stop the push back here please. Thank you, park and brake sat. Definitely not the best pushback, but hey. Okay, look at that. Now it's really motoring for a long time. Now it's really motoring for a long time. Should take only like 30 seconds or something. What's going on now? Okay, here we go. That was a long motoring time. Look at that, minute and 50. So, Luca Biondi in the comments, Amir talked about it, the EGT probe lies after the core, so hot air from the core is blown into the exhaust where the EGT probe is. Well, it's the first time I hear about something like that. Um, surely on the A330 at least, that phenomenon does not exist. Maybe it's different on the A320. So, 2 minutes 30 engine start. Okay, engine 1 start. So... It does sound strange to me, but, well, I do suppose he probably has uh, some data that uh, backs this up, so I'll leave it uncommented any further. Especially seeing that the um, EGT just stays where it is now, you know? If initially there is a short rise, that would... Yeah, that might be explainable. But, um, you know that it just stays there. I mean, disregard where I moved my airplane, but see, we've got a whole lot of air moving from the front to the back now. So even if some initial air from the hot core is moved towards the uh, sensor, which could make sense, then that should sure enough start to reduce pretty rapidly now, and not just in terms of... Uh, ones of degrees over there like it does right here. That doesn't seem to make much sense to me. I mean, we are moving quite a lot of air through the uh, engine right now. Look at it from the front. We are moving enough air that the entire fan starts to rotate. Remember, the starter motor does not rotate the fan, it only rotates the N2 spool, which is the innermost, the high pressure spool. And anything else is rotated through the air that's sucked into the engine. So, Temperature remaining at these levels for such a long time seems strange. And Neo Sky Aegean, how do you know the engine is on on the IAEs? Didn't see an avail icon. Uh, the avail did show, but it just takes very long for the engine to start up. But you will be able to notice once the N1 reaches about 20% or so, you will see the avail come into view over here.
So now the engine is uh, spooling up and generator coming online. Here you go. There's the avail. Okay, after start checklist. And anti ice. Off. Ecam starters. Checked. Pitch trim 30%. Rudder trim neutral. After start checklist complete. So temperature is down to 145. That's okay. Brake fan coming off. Flight control check. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Rudder. Full left. Full right, neutral. Okay, let's go for taxi. So, we slightly pushed into the grass. I guess that is why the plane doesn't start taxiing on its own, but a little bit of power should surely be able to get us out. Yep, yeah, here we go. Okay, brake track. Pressure zero. Very nice tiller effectiveness, by the way. Really worth pointing that out. So overall engine start time approximately two minutes. Well, well, Vatsam ADC is gonna be happy. Waiting for the cabin. And nothing to review on the takeoff briefing. Everything's as it is. Still got the uh, visual conditions for a visual departure here, so that's what we're going to do. And Kritik Varma, I'm using a sensitivity of minus 20 now, as recommended by Phoenix. With the Thrustmaster ABBA stick, that seems to work rather well. I really like the way how the brakes behave now as well. Okay, parking brake set. We gotta wait for the cabin and get ready. By the way, can we hear any announcements? Doesn't seem like it, huh? Okay, so be it. So be it. Well, let's go non standard and do the taxi checklist down to ECAM memo already. Flight controls checked. Flap setting con. One. Radar and predictive wind shear. On and auto. Engine mode cell. Norm. Holding a decam memo. And I tell you what, we'll do the lineup already. Just got to be careful with our cabin, so let's actually put a little reminder into our scratch pad. So, so that we actually think of the cabin when we have lined the airplane up. I'll let the plane go all the way straight here onto the runway so that we get the most of our paid runway. Try to minimize the use of the brake. The brakes are gonna get hotter the more often you actually use them. Very good, they seem to be ready. Yeah, gonna pick it up in a moment. Hello? Thank you. Okay, cabin crew, prepare for departure. So, ECAM memo, takeoff no blue, taxi checklist complete, lineup checklist. Takeoff runway, 1-4 for length, TCAS, 
Tara, packs one and two on, lineup checklist complete. Take off. So about 1.05 and one. There you go, gives us a nice 50%. Manflex 63, SRS, Auto Thrust Blue. Thrust set. Checked. One on it, not. Checked. V1, rotate. Positive climb, gear up. Enough, checked. So, everything is clear. Turn right to intercept. Thrust climb, climb A thrust. Are we going right over the village? Oh yes. Those guys are gonna have a good time there. Flap zero. Speed checked, flap zero. Okay, looking good, so. Airborne. Lights off. And let's go direct to... Kopar. Insert. Flying a little bit outside the flight director right now, but that is fully intentional. Okay, continue the climb, flight level 220, that's our required cruising level, and here we go. Right. Autopilot, set standard, standard cross check, passing flight level 52 now. Check. Nice rate of climb there, 3000 feet a minute. That is all we can ask, is it? And it's green saying in the comments, lots of people using IAEs. I wonder why that might be the case. I absolutely can't explain it. Alright, so we're up in the air, we're on the way, what else can you ask for? It is looking a good looking engine, isn't it? I do certainly like it. The new model overall... I'm not 100% sure yet what it is exactly, especially when looking at the model just from an angle like we do right now. There is something to it that makes it look very good, that I'm not 100% sure about what it is. If you've got an idea, be sure to put it in the chat. Alright, so, passing level 100. So, copy and clear. 
nothing in here, nothing in here. Athens, three left. Okay, looking good. So 220 is going to be our final level, and that's it. So the sun is slowly coming down here. I really like that we can put the uh, sunshade up now with the EFB in place. But I am wondering why there is no sound effect associated with that sunshade. Because those, those window shades, they do have a very distinct noise attached to it. I recently did record it. Um, let me actually play that recording for you. Obviously, I only have it on my uh, phone, so I don't have it on the computer right now. But, fully apart from that, here it is. Pretty much that sound. But, looks like that is not really playing um, on the Phoenix. I do hope they're gonna get a good sample so that they can um, realize it in the future. So, 100 miles till the top of the sand. And it does look like a perfect example for a visual approach once again. But uh, let's see about that. Let's see about that. And Mayor Hayos 84 Guys, does anyone know if they removed the default stairs so that non-GSX users have no stairs? Let me check. So it should be on the ground. Okay. Can't check it in the air, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Looks like that feature is disabled in the air. Alright, so, um, then let's have a further look into the chat. A um, couple guys talking about a PMDG 737 MAX. Yeah, it is confirmed that it's coming. The question is just when it's gonna come. And that has not really been answered. And Felix Almonte, that's a very good comment you made a little above. Every computer is different and streams a lot of times lag while the person flying is just fine. Indeed, that seems to be the case quite a bit on uh, my computer. Basically, I'm seeing a very good, you know, 45 or 60 frames or something over here. But my internet connection is a bit of an issue, especially when my girlfriend is uh, watching stuff on her mobile phone, which I'm kind of imagining she's doing right now. And AJ, how much snappier is the EFB? That's by far my biggest complaint with Phoenix B1. Well, it is working well, I'd say. I mean, barely had any problems. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah, I would say it's working just fine. As it should. Pretty happy with it. Okay, so... <clears throat> it's green. Do you know what you should do when to report radial fix level? No, I've never heard that term yet. And Rainbow Katzian, does the V2 not have the auto tiller disconnect option anymore? No, it doesn't. There has been quite a bit of uh, work on the different tiller options. Basically, they wanted to make the pedal disconnect button work more realistic. You've got an option that you can use now on the um, pedal adjust button as well. But I do recommend you to check the um, pinned announcement in the Phoenix Discord, where the link to their um, website, where information on that um, has been posted. To be honest, I haven't dug into that system too much myself yet, but I'm kind of imagining it. Um, I'm imagining it to be a not too hard to understand, but to be honest, I didn't invest that time yet. Speed, vertical speed. The plane is pitching down pretty quickly in the vertical speed. Let's just go back up to 2,000 feet a minute. Yeah, that is a real quick pitching there. I don't know if the A320 is any different to the A330. I would imagine not um, in these terms. And it seems like the plane is pitching very quickly here. That seems pretty rapid to me.
Okay, overall, flying um, does seem to be rather fine, though. And Jack Jacob, is uh, computed fluid dynamics on any airliners for MSF as modeled? Well, a couple of developers say that they um, used part of that, All Star. For example, um, PMDG is using it as well now, Mark. But, honestly, um, the CFD model of Microsoft Flight Simulator is pretty basic. It is pretty basic. I can say that because I do know one developer who's basically written his degree in computational fluid dynamics. And if he tells me that the um, sim engine is limited in those points, then I do believe him, even without having the technical expertise to quote that stuff myself. But that's just a, just a little pointer from my side. And Alex in Ojosa, is anyone having the invalid flight plan uplink even though you have installed the latest IRAC? Nope. And Chumper Studio, have you tried the SDS with your new stick? I have the FS Project stick and I really did not like the feel of SDS. No, I haven't tried that yet. Um, because it does seem to behave fine without. So I thought like, well, let's not break anything. And just do it that way. And Neo Sky Aegean, Mark on that altitude. Well, not sure how the A320 works, but yeah, um, on many aircraft types, whenever the plane is in cruise mode, it is always going to be driven on Mark number, regardless of the altitude, how high you are. And Christopher, by the way, do I think that Inibuilds will release the A350 this year? Honestly, yes, but I'm not so sure about the state that the airplane is going to be in. But I am very sure that they will release it this year. Right, enter destination data. Let's go for it and uh, grab some basic data. So, weather request, and we're gonna go for Lima Golf Alpha Victor. It'll be a Meta, sent. So, what else are we gonna do? Well, small thing there. For the arrival, coming in via KR again. And runway 3 is gonna be in use, I'm pretty sure about that. Let's go ahead and grab our arrival information. So, arrival. How are you planned? Well, KR arrival. We do know that by now. Or is it? Well, Varix arrival. Varix 3 Charlie. Okay. Let's find those charts. Arrival. Where is Varix? Here we go, Varix 3 Charlie. Okay, so from Varix to Kea, and from Kea we fly the arrival. That sounds fine to me. And then for the approach, it's gonna be a Yankee approach on 2 3 left, I assume. Yankee 3 left. Initial from Kea. Yeah, that looks about like it. And then Yankee 3 left, final approach. Okay, here we go. So, let's go ahead and start checking our flight plan. And then quickly check our weather as well. So, um, 110 at 5, 10 kilometers. Oh, look at that. Right, scattered 1500, broken 4000, 16 degrees, 1020. So long, enter destination data, yeah, on it. So, Varix 3 Charlie is basically just Varix to Kea. We can do that. Alright, Varix to Kea is what we got. And then from there, Arnav initial, oh sorry, ILS initial approach, Kea until, how's that defined? Until some random point where you start a right and turn onto the radial inbound? Well, that's interesting. Well, they do have the Alpha Tango Victor 185 in here. Ah, yeah, okay, over here is the turning point. Okay, that makes sense. I'm gonna right and turn inbound like that. 
I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a shortcut over here, just to say that. Okay, here we go. So then we go into the final approach chart. Which we can find over here. Starting in 1900 feet, 5 miles, 3 degree glide slope. And that's what we have over here. Alright, and the missed approach straight at 12 dB Sierra Alpha Tango, max 220. Right hand turn to the VOR. Yep, that looks about like it. Climbing to 4,000 and climbing to 4,000. To Echo Golf November. Yep. That is looking just about fine. So, we need Sierra Alpha Tango. And we also need Kilo Echo Alpha and Alpha Tango Victor. Okay, tell you what, I'll use Alpha Tango Victor here. Because Kilo Echo Alpha... Somewhat en route, but ATV we need on the way in oh, over here, so I'm going to use that. Landing runway is in, so having a look over here, 281 in the descent is looking good. Then we can start filling out some of that arrival stuff. Okay, so 110 at 5. Temperature 16 and QNH 1020. Another config 3 approach. Well, I'll tell you what, no, let's do config 4 this time. Because we've seen on the previous that config 3 is working fine now. So let's check config 4. And then 455 is going to be our minimums. Alright, for the missed approach, climbing to 4000 feet. And the MSA in that sector, well, is higher. So we're going to use engine out acceleration altitude of 4000. Right, fuel prediction, 18 minutes extra, and we'll copy the um, active to secondary. Okay, so that is excellent. Then let's have a look into the landing runway. Landing on 3 left, 3,800 meters. Vacating Alpha 9, so that's about 1,600 down the runway, I would say. About half the runway. But we do have a little display threshold. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll do mathematics, but I do suppose that it is going to become an auto break uh, medium. Sorry, actually an auto brake low. 3.2 landing fuel, so burning 400 kilos, 642. So, 64.2, here we go. Low auto brake, flaps full, auto thrust off, 1943 meters. Excellent. Alright. So. That's pretty much everything we need. Then let's say bye-bye to the passengers, and off we go. Ladies and gentlemen, from Flight Act, this is your captain speaking. We'll start our descent towards Athens in a few moments. Remaining flight time now approximately 15 minutes, and we expect weather conditions that are slightly cloudier than they were over in um, course. Temperature 16 degrees centigrade. We'd like to thank you very much for choosing Eugene for today's flight. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, and we look forward to see you all again on a future scheduled service. Thank you very much for your attention, and we wish you a nice and safe onward journey. Okay, cool. So with that, we are pretty much done with everything. <clears throat> and Jacob, thank you so much for the 13 Swedish crowns, I believe, donation. That's really appreciated. Thank you so much. And Justin, um, can you just buy the A319 later on when it comes out, or do you have to have the base A320? I don't think that has been. Um, I don't think that has been announced yet. And Neo Sky Aegean, is the weather radar working? I don't think so. X Dope Z, how many flight hours do you have? Well, something about 4,000 or so. 500 of which are Airbus hours by now, so it's going really quick. Beautifully looking, isn't it? Really beautifully looking. Okay, so time for the approach briefing then. First officer, it's your turn. 
Okay, so the highest MSA for the approach is 7,000, 4,000 in the um, other parts. We are going to fly the star M onto Kea and then most likely radar vectors onto an ILS approach 3 left. Minimum spirometric 455, go around straight at 12 miles, right and turn back to the VOR and then out to the north to Alpha Golf November and climbing 4,000 feet. Extra fuel 15 minutes. Alright, guidance for the approach is um, probably going to be localizer and glide slope. I might just do a raw data once again. Landing flaps full, stop margin is going to be about 2,000 meters. Reversers will be used in uh, maximum. Auto brakes low and we are going to come off on the first high speed exit to the right hand side. And um, I don't have any hotspots for the taxi in. Nothing special, nothing non-standard. Do you see any threats? Well, I have one threat, and that is the shortcut that we can expect from our traffic control and um, cutting us in over here. So, for that, well, not much that we can do, actually, other than to start our descent a little bit earlier and just stay a little bit lower on the uh, profile. Any questions? No? Excellent. Alright, then I'll tell you what. We're about 8 miles in, so let's just go ahead and start our descent now. I'm gonna go down flight level 100 at first. Here you go, thruster idle open descent, alt flight level 100 blue. I think I'm going to do this descent here in um, selected modes so that we can get to know the actual descent performance of the plane a little bit better than we previously used to. The previous Phoenix version just descended very, very quickly and. Um, well, they do say that they worked on the drag profile. And Yuri, thank you so much for the 5 euros 99 donation. Your question is how old were I've been when I started pilot training as you are a train driver right now, looking to become an airline pilot and fearing that it might already be too late at age 25. Honestly, 25 is not too late at all. Quite the opposite. You do have a good foundation there in that you already have a second education, which is something that definitely isn't too bad for um, becoming a pilot. So I would say you're still at a very good age where you can start your pilot training. Personally, I've been, let me calculate, 21? I think 21. Might have been 22. And um, you absolutely um, should be able to start pilot training at this age without any problems. On my first on my um, first type rating on the 737, the classmate with whom I did the simulated training was actually approaching the end of his 40s and this was his first pilot job. So a cu couple of questions regarding SDS. I'm not using it at the moment because my stick is working pretty fine. So, I don't see any need to actually use that right now. And NDMZ, um, you're absolutely right, Athens is usually using radar vectors. Okay, so, then let's continue on the present heading. We're going to cut this short a little bit, and I am going to extend the uh, center line here. CI3 left, rat in looks about right. Okay, insert. Full heading. Here we go. So, apparently we are how high? 10,000 feet. No. We are not 10,000 feet high. This is incorrect once again. Doesn't take a mathematical genius to come out with that. But look at that! Distance to destination 17 miles. That doesn't seem right. I mean, that absolutely isn't right. It's probably taking the distance from here to the airport, so from our intersection on the present heading, but honestly, no. Why is it reducing airspeed? What's the plane doing? 280, maintain that please. It's activated the approach phase automatically. Why? We are like what? 50 miles from landing? 
Why does it activate the approach phase? Well, let's get it out of that again then. Select manage speed. Why would I? And most importantly, why am I not getting out of the approach phase when I'm inserting a new cruising altitude? Okay, something is completely messed up with the FMS here. That is not correct behavior. I have a feeling it's related to that distance to the landing there. That it just reactivates the approach phase all the time. Well, let's see what happens if I press that in. Now we do have a route again. Distance 14 miles. No. Okay, I don't know what this is doing, but the FMS is messed now. This is not supposed to work like that at all. Yeah, I have no idea. Okay, tell you what. Let's not care, we wanted to fly selected anyway, so we are flying selected now. <laughs> Only that now we're forced to do so, because the managed modes have just gone mad on us. Company message. What are they writing us? Probably Amir telling me, what are you doing to my airplane? Ops, no ADC required. Yeah, thank you. We've got different problems anyway now. 13 miles landing distance. It's ridiculous. I mean, how is getting 13 miles? Doesn't make any sense. Alright then, let's go down 3000. Set Q&H. Can H1020 cross check 12600 now. Checked. Might have to use a little bit of speed brake here. Lose a bit of that altitude. Speed back 250. And Xdope Z, is any AI assistant turned on? Well, at least I haven't turned it on intentionally, but let's just check real quick. No, it's all automated from um, the Airbus. So Phoenix doesn't even let me control that. Well, so be it. So let's see, 250 full speed brake, 2700 feet a minute. Looks about right. I just want to see what half or uh, what a uh, no speed brake is going to give me at 250 knots. I would be expecting something about 1,500 feet a minute or so. Let's give the plane a little bit of time to stabilize there. Yeah, 1,500 feet a minute. That is awesome. So the descent performance is finally correct now. And now we need the speed brake again to get the airplane down. Right, passing 10,000. Approach checklist. Battle ref, QNH 1020, seatbelts on. Hello? Hi, Captain. The cabin is now secure for landing. Thank you. Okay, let's start the checklist again, please. So, approach reference, QNH 1020, seatbelts on, minimum, barrel 455, auto brake, low, engine mode cell, norm, approach checklist complete. Alright, let's get rid of those. Okay, so we are rather fast at the moment, but if you look at the level of arrow over here, we'll <clears throat> we'll roughly be able to reach that um, altitude by the time we reach the center line, and that's all we can ask for.
It's definitely going to be a fast approach, but <clears throat> should be very well possible to do. Reaching the glide slope now. Let's start reducing our speed. Speed managed. So that is looking pretty good for now. Okay, so starting the right hand turn. We'll probably go slightly through the center line here in order to gain a slight increased track mileage. So let's go right 060. Okay, Pro Trumped. So that's Glasgow Local at the Blue Cat 3 Dual Autopilot 1 and 2, Lockstar. What's it doing now? Oh, huh. Autopilot Disconnect, interesting. Okay, well, try that once more. Nope. Isn't working, is it? Okay, we just lost both autopilots. And I've got no idea why. I mean, it's probably related to the um, alpha protection speed coming up so high, but why that is up in first place, I got no idea. I mean, it definitely seems to me that the alpha prod, prod speed is rather high here. Speed all star. Okay, let's focus on recapturing the ILS for a second. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> as soon as the glide slope comes alive, I'm gonna go flaps one. In the meantime, one more try. Nope, autopilot doesn't come on. And interestingly enough, I cannot cancel the auto flight autopilot off message with the instinctive disconnect push button. That should absolutely be possible. Yeah, status reads normal. Okay. Interesting. Flaps one. Speed checked. And I'll tell you what, in that case, let's go fly direct this off. Auto thrust off. <coughs> Flaps two. Let's do 170 knots until, let's say, some 5 DME or so. Here we go. So, as the French say, the Airbus does no ballooning. Okay, bird on, and here we go. Checked. Light stop capture, go around altitude 4000 set. Well, that was interesting. The plane was misbehaving quite a bit here. Not sure what caused that. The first flight worked very well, except for that speed brake issue. But now on the second flight, we really had some problems. But well, let's get it down on the ground and then we can um, do a little debriefing. Okay, gear down. Somebody said in the comments, check rudder pedals. Well, there is nothing on the rudder pedals here. They were in the uh, middle position. Okay, flaps three. By the way, a lovely rainbow out there, isn't it? Wonder. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is really beautiful. 
Okay, back to the cockpit, flaps full. Landing checklist, ECAM memo, landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. So, pitch just shy of two and a half degrees. That seems pretty correct. So, the pitch is good. The power setting we can't comment on just yet because of all the turbulence going over the hills here. But I would expect something about 50 and a bit percent. Oh, now the speed is dropping a bit. Yeah, look at that, 58%, a little bit less, but generally seems okay. A bit turbulent here, that's kind of what Athens is used, or what Athens is known for. Continue. Right, spoilers. No reverse. Where's my reverses? Here we go. For some reason, it doesn't seem to work from the stick. Okay, thrust reverse green, decel. Missed the first exit though, so we're gonna take the second. 70 knots. Manual brakes. And here we are, welcome to Athens. Well, that was interesting. That was definitely interesting. So I'm gonna start the timing here, so that we can um, time our single engine taxi. Into the turn, not too quick, please. And here we are. All right, here we are. So let's get the charts out so that we know where we are going first. And here we are, okay. Alpha, Alpha 7, hotel, onto the main apron. And once we're there, we can do the rest. Needs a little bit getting used to um, the slightly changed taxi model. Okay, so we didn't want to take the first, but the second taxiway. Here we go, Alpha 7, there it was on the sign. Here it is. The change brake model also needs a little bit of getting used to here. But this is looking good now. Okay, so taxiing in, and then the APU is starting up already. So let's have a quick look into the single engine taxi in guideline. So procedures not allowed on slippery taxiway, uphill slopes or high gross weight. We don't have either. Engine cooldown of three minutes from touchdown must be applied to be conservative. Two minutes as from runway vacated can be taken. <coughs> so we have two minutes from that now. Okay, so APU started. So engine two, shut down, yellow electric pump on. Okay, then let's see how single engine taxi is going to look like. So what I can say already is that the plane handles very nicely on uh, landing now. The flare is an absolute joy. They did an awesome job improving the uh, flare over there. Really good job on uh, Phoenix's side getting that right. Now, 
On the other hand side though, it seems like there are a couple new issues introduced. Like on both approaches, we had some issues with um, some of the automation. On the first approach over in course, it just retracted our spoilers and we couldn't get them out again. Not even by putting the lever back in and then pulling them back out. So we just couldn't get any spoilers out anymore. And on the second approach, it just messed up the entire FMS guidance. So the moment we went direct to radial in, it just activated the approach phase by itself, like 50 miles away from the landing. And um, we couldn't even get out of approach phase anymore. The normal procedure to get out of approach phase is just to insert the cruising altitude again on the progress page and then approach phase would deactivate. I kind of suspect that we couldn't get out of the approach phase anymore because the uh, remaining distance to the runway was so little that the airplane just automatically enabled the approach phase immediately again. That is kind of what I expect happened there. Whether or not that theory is true, I don't know for sure, but um, at least that's what I'm guessing. Okay, so gonna park on Alpha 11, then let's give GSX another try and see what that's gonna be like, if it has the mercy to start up at all, that is. No, it's not even starting up. What a crappy piece of junk. Honestly, it just never works. It just never works. Okay, so next left, and what's gonna be in front then? Alpha 7. Okay, so Alpha 7 is what we're going to take. That's unfortunate. I kinda hoped I could uh, demonstrate you the automatic deboarding capabilities, but looks like I cannot because GSX has once more decided that it doesn't want to do it. But okay, so be it. By the way, interesting to see that um, the airplane is still accelerating in idle thrust, even though we are on single engine taxi already. So really a lot of power that we do have available here. I like it. Alright, lights going out, after landing checklist by the way, radar and predictive wind shear off, after landing checklist complete. So Alpha 7, that's the gate that I've just decided we're gonna take, probably a little bit too large for where we park in the real world. But I try to check Flight Radar 24 for the arrival stands, and unfortunately, they lost the uh, tracking of the airplane every time on final approach. But okay, so be it. So it indeed does take a little bit getting used to breaking the airplane correctly. But okay, here we are. Okay, brake is set, yellow electric pump off, APU bleed on, and shut down. Interesting, by the way, that they say cabin crew disarm doors when we set the parking brake, but when the engines are still running. They certainly should not do that. They certainly should not do that. Okay, the engine has run down. Then we can do the parking checklist, please. Park and brake or trucks. Let's brake set. Engines off, wing lights off, fuel pumps off, parking checklist complete. Alright guys, so there you have it. IAE V2500 engine on the Phoenix. What's my first impression then? Well, my first impression is a very good one. Now, they did introduce some new bugs again, it seems, but let's be honest over here, that's just some new bugs versus a whole different lot of improvements. I will need an update or two in order to rectify those, but if we just have a general look into the cabin, we can see it's looking really wonderful. Something we haven't checked yet, by the way, is the passenger service unit up here. Look at that. That is looking pretty good. Unfortunately, no button simulated, but hey, asking too much, huh? In any case, the rest of the cabin looking really wonderful. Just look at those windows over here. It really makes you feel like you're in the airplane. Now, the rest of it, like the galleys over here, are looking really good as well now. 
and in the cockpit we also saw a lot of changes. Landing feels superb now and the IAE engines are working really really well. I gotta try the CFM engines next, see how the new model looks over on the CFMs. And um, from there, the general taxi behavior of the airplane was really nice as well, especially in the single engine taxi version. So overall, in my opinion, the update is a huge success and I can only congratulate Phoenix for that release. Few new issues introduced, I'm sure they are going to do an update or two in order to iron those out again. But in the meantime, uh, all I can say is they've done a great job over here. Alright, so brakes hot. Park and brake prefer trucks. Delay takeoff for cooling. Clear brakes. Clear brakes. And remove starters. So looking at this, 300 degrees. Yeah, that's fine. No reason to um, get overly reactive here. We're done for the day anyway, so I would like to thank you very much for watching, guys. I do hope that you liked the stream. Now, be sure to head out to your Phoenix. Be sure to set your sensitivities, minus 20, as they recommend. And finally, be sure to read through the... And finally, be sure to read through the recommendations that Phoenix has given on their release announcements. You can find that in their Discord and also on their uh, website on fanixsim.com. Finally, thank you very much for watching. Do hope you liked it. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button if you did indeed like it. And if you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. With that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. Over the next couple of days, I am going to have a couple more... A couple more videos online with the CFM engines, which have also gotten an overhaul now. And on the CFMs, I can give you a little bit more detailed input, even since I did fly about 3,000 flight hours on CFM 56 engines. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. See you all again on the next one. And in the meantime, that's me signing off. Have a good evening and enjoy your flights with the updated Phoenix.